Hello, everyone. My guest today is Ryan O'Donnell. He lives at the top of the funnel ever since he landed at Yahoo via acquisition in 2007. He then co-founded Replyify to automate cold emails and follow-ups because other solutions on the market were either glorified mail merge apps or too cumbersome to work with. He's trying to fit right in the middle. Ryan, are you ready to take us to the top? Let's do it, dude. Which company were you with that was acquired by Yahoo? Red Media. Red Media. And so was that a kind of a pure play agency or? No, so it... it uh, so it was right media. It was the first online ad exchange, right? Just shaking up how buyers and sellers transacted media. It, every platform has it now, you know, buying on a dynamic, you know, CPM model, not just your traditional CPM based. Um, so I, I got in there early on, ended up joining the international team there, grew it from, you know, zero to about two, you know, $20 million in revenue. Yahoo came in, acquired the company, Stayed there for a while. Uh, on international team, they they were like, "Hey, move to London, Hong Kong, or Singapore, or to take a package." I took a package, left. Thought I'd get rich by building a startup and flipping it to Facebook, and you know, five or six iterations later, here we are. I was gonna say some of, some of your other Yahoo friends uh, went down that path and did it pretty successfully. Yeah, app Nexus, <laughs> right? It, right. So well, the, well, uh, WhatsApp. Those guys were obviously, I think, at Yahoo or on the, in the early days. Yeah, there were, uh, Yahoo is a, a company that's produced a lot of people who've done some cool things. Yeah. Okay, let's talk about Replyify. So when was launch date? 2017. 2017. July 2017. Okay. And for folks that don't know, uh, explain what it does. A cold email automation that doesn't suck. Yeah. Right? Uh, so built for salespeople who are either sending emails one by one, uh, trying to get a new prospect to engage or you know, sending cold lists over to their marketing team who uses MailChimp and then ends up getting their MailChimp account shut down because he can't send cold emails with MailChimp. Right. Yep. yep. And what are people paying? I know you probably have a bunch of different customers, but on average, what do they pay per month? Uh, around ninety nine bucks a month. Uh, we have plans everywhere from you know zero bucks a month. So traditional kind of SaaS freemium model, free plan. Uh, take the branding off for a buck, and then you know fits into it. Really, you know nets out on how many contacts you need to prospect per month, right? And every company kind of grows into that number and figures out their their sweet spot. We've got plans that fit all across the board. Yeah. And over the past 12 to 24 months, how many customers have you scaled to? Uh, users, over 10,000. Customers, around 2,000. Okay. Churn is critical in this space because people have to keep sending emails for them to stay sticky with you. What is your churn today and how do you manage it? Uh, seven to ten percent, depending on on how you look at it, right? Uh, pure churn, or is it seasonal churn, um, where they take three months off because no one no one's buying in Q4 for a particular business model? Um, how we manage it? Well, hold on, real quick. Let's just avoid all the nuance and just look at it on an annual basis. So, on an annual basis, what's revenue churn? Seven two, and and, oh, okay. and we're in and we're in the you know just crossed twelve or fourteen months old. Yeah. Yeah. So, so about seven and a half revenue churn. That's, that's annually. Right. And that's net or, uh, or, uh, or gross. Do you I know? have to pull up. That's okay. The, 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 well, actually that would have to be, you know, net unless you have some mechanism to drive expansion revenue. Are you driving significant expansion revenue at this point or is it too, probably too early? How do you define expansion? Uh, a cohort that signed up a year ago for a hundred bucks a month is now paying 200 bucks a month. There's expansion of a hundred bucks. All right. I'll give you an example. So we work with a lot of agencies. Um, and those agencies will, you know, do their own business and then they'll go out and sell a cold email automation done for you service into their clients, right? An SEO business will create a new revenue stream. Um, we're seeing, you know, folks coming out of companies doing sales development, not wanting to become account executives, but wanting to become, you know, founders and CEOs. So they hang a shingle up, become an agency, find companies who don't want to, you know, build prospect lists, write cold emails, manage campaigns. And, and we're seeing a lot of growth in that space. Well, again, so back, back to the question that do you have a means to drive expansion revenue, like additional features, additional seats, things like that, or no? Yeah. And I would look at our, our agency model, our team model as being that expansion revenue, right? So agency comes on, they start with five seats, they continue to, you know, they continue to grow into it and and expand their their license model, but okay. not necessarily like like a you know other than this account type to do this or you know to get Salesforce access or switch accounts into into different plans to to jump in you know at a certain account level, um, but might not be the same expansion. That's we might be 
having a disconnect there in expansion. Expansion revenue is just you take the cohort that signed up a year ago, a portion of them are going to churn, which it sounds like you have 7.2% of that revenue will churn. Correct. What I'm trying to figure out is what does that same cohort expand by? So if it expands by 10% and you churn 7%, net net it's 103%, right? 10 right. minus 7. Right. So, we're, so we're we're doing those. So the expansion then is is over 10. So oh, we're okay. we're netting out better than our churn on the expansion. Got okay, so then, good. So you got about seven seven point two percent revenue churn annually on a gross basis, and it sounds like maybe one hundred three percent net revenue retention because these agencies are expanding. Right. Yeah, that's great. And um, I mean, can I uh, walk? I mean, can I do the math? Two thousand customer times one hundred bucks a month that puts you at about two hundred grand per month. Is it accurate? No. Okay. And so, um, why is that? Yeah, we're well, we're doing because we've got plans starting in a buck a month. Uh huh. Right going all the way to $99 a month. Uh, it depends how, on how you look at our, at our user base, right? And how we, we define what the average. Uh, so we have a agency owner, CEO, who has a plan and pays us money and has multiple seats under their plan that they're paying for. We're doing around 50 grand a month in revenue. Mm. Okay, that's fine. So 50 grand a month right now in revenue, I can just then obviously divide that by the 2000 to essentially get, you know, a, a form of a form of ARPA. But what you're saying is, again, 99 bucks a month is not the average. That's actually your highest price point. 129 is our highest price point. 199. Right, right. Okay. So you got about 2000 folks on average, maybe paying you 25 bucks a month. That brings up about 50 grand per month today in revenue. Right. And right. now where were you at a year ago? I mean, you were just starting. Did you have any revenue a year ago? Yeah, uh, July 2017, 584 in revenue. August was 1,200 yeah. some dollars, <laughs> right? So we've been, you know, kind of hockey stick up to the right. Yeah. Uh, well, well, and to be fair, and I'll give you credit, but obviously growing from a hundred bucks to, you know, you know, a thousand bucks is pretty, you know, easier than going from a million to 10. Hey, it, it's, it's, it's part of it. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I, I was digging in your podcast, you know, when you, when you guys sent the note and said you wanted to jam, um, you know, you bring some hitters onto the show, which is, which is, it was interesting to go through and see, you know, some numbers that are, what did you, what'd you, you know, think? Did you enjoy it? I, 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 I dig your style, man. You're, you know, you're straight to the point. You get to it. You ask tough questions. You make folks, you know, think about things. You know that um, this get, this will get more downloads though than Jay from Atlassian because people because they watch Jay from Atlassian. You know, he just came on president there. That, that's that's aspirational, but it's not actionable. Someone like you, you're one step ahead of someone that's stuck in a corporate job that wants to launch their own thing, and they're two years away from being where you are today. You're more actionable. They see what you're doing, and they take lessons, and they start doing it. And that's where we spend a lot of time on our, on our customer acquisition. So I know one of the questions you're going to ask is what's your, what's your CAC, yeah. right? I don't have one. Yeah. Um, we're, we're testing right now. There, there are, there are two of us full time at the moment running this, this platform. Uh, we're your typical kind of hacker hustler team. Um, so a lot of our, uh, a lot of our, you know, growth and, and acquisition comes from dog fooding our own product, right? So we send a lot of cold emails. Um, we've done a lot of podcasts, Right. So we'll, we'll cold email podcasters to get on influential podcasts like this. Um, I'll, ha I'll actually have to take you out of the rotation uh, <laughs> if you're, you're, you're on that list, I'm sure. And, uh, it, and then we, you know, what we do different than some other folks that, that we go against is, you know, we build software that's less annoying to work with, right? Because we, we've seen everything. We've been in the space for about five years at the top of the funnel. Um, and then, the context that we bring and the love, the bear hug that we bring and, and kind of help folks who might be new to cold email um, and getting them successful and helping these agency owners kind of build out their plan um, is, is part of our growth, right? We don't have a, a team of, you know, three SDRs, you know, funneling leads over to, to 30 account execs and, and worried about that overhead. Um, yeah. You get two dads who, who, you know, know how to run, you know, SaaS companies, understand, our limits, at least, you know, to this extent and, and create a nice business around it. Any bootstrap today or have you raised? 100% bootstrap. That's great. Yeah. I mean, so how do you get to scale, right? So how do you double? How do you get up to 100 grand a month? That, you watch a podcast like yours. You listen to, to, to people jam about like how to do this or that. Um, you take lessons, you know, take notes on what's worked, what hasn't worked. I mean, for us, uh, I'm a 30, what, 37 year old father of three. And I would say that's my, that's my number one job, right? I, I coach, I work from home. Okay. Um, I, I, I love my family. I grind my ass off. 
right? Um, I, I work crazy hours, but I always make time for my family. And I think that that scale and us not wanting, you know, specifically, we don't want to raise money at this point. I don't want to raise $10 million and go out and have to be responsible for, you know, hiring a team and growing the business out and getting an office and being responsible for culture. It's not a lifestyle fit for me personally at this moment, right? I think it's something that, that we want to, you know, we'll be looking to do that. I don't know if it'll be with this, with this business or not. Um, but again, it, it's the internet. You can, there are, you know, 10 million ways to make money on it. Yeah. How, I mean, the, the, the plan though, if you did want, when I say scale, I don't mean raise capital. I just mean, just grow the business or, and what I'm hearing you say is you're kind of, you don't mind just staying kind of at 50. It's a good lifestyle right now as you're managing other parts of your life. Fair. Yes. Is that accurate? I see. Okay, good. Very yes. good. I, I, I think if we got to the point that the scale comes when the processes and the automation that we've built for running certain components of our business, sales, marketing, you know, support, uh, development, when that starts to break down and we have clients who are upset because, you know, they've waited eight hours for someone to get back to them or, you know, some feature that they've been dying for just, you know, hasn't been built. When that breaks down, that's when we'll look to incrementally start to build there. And I think, you know, when you've got a small bootstrap company um, that offers a very robust, a very robust product offering, right? So we might have, you know, two people full time running this product. It doesn't look like it. It doesn't feel like it. You know, you'd think there's a hell of a lot more than than two people behind this. And I think when we start to lose that. Um, or if a certain component of that breaks down, that's where we look to, you know, that's where we look to make the next, the next move. Yeah. What's and then your, you look at what's your, and yeah, go ahead. Just, go for it. What's your partner's name? The developer? Mark. Mark. So, I mean, you have 2000 customers. If you're, they're sending in support tickets, let's just assume it's just two per week with initial feature requests. I mean that you can't keep, I mean, that one guy can't keep up with. I mean, I mean, how, so how do you manage that? Right. We we tag team it. Intercom is uh, it, it, intercom is is our best friend. I don't mean sorry. I don't mean just the inbound message getting a reply. I mean him. People actually requesting new features twice a week. Those are that's a whole tech spec. That's a whole new sprint on the dev cycle. How does he say you have to say no to things? We do, and 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 gracefully. I, I wouldn't say so. We're out of the first year was a lot of those, right? So January or you know July through. February, March, uh, 28. So July, 2017 to March, 2018, I would say we spent the majority of that time working with clients, taking those feature requests, trying to understand why is it important prioritizing based on, is it important for this one client? How much are they, you know, what's this worth to us in terms of revenue, prioritizing features based on paying clients first. And then, and then the, the, you know, future proofing that feature to make sure that it's not just built for one person, that it's something that overall can help, you know, raise, uh, raise the, the platform. And that's how we, you know, I would say once a week, we kind of rip through our feature lists in a Google doc, it's, you know, kind of built out and prioritized. And then we, you know, we pick, you know, uh, highest revenue impact, uh, highest impact across the platform, and then level of effort, right? How long is it going to take to do? And then just work on, you know, really quick sprints. And then we'll do a couple of those, knock them out, and then we'll look at a longer term project. Um, while the the quick features that we just released bake for a little bit, we'll roll out some, you know, some other, uh, you know, longer term things. And I think our, our focus in the second half of, of 2018 has been, let's make the platform less annoying to, to, to use, right? Let's look at, you know, and, and that's not, not just our platform, but uh, across, you know, other companies who do cold email automation because they skew from, you know, mail merge systems all the way through to like, I think you had Manny from Outreach on here, right? Um, who, who's going to have a, a gold star platform, different approach than us, right? He's got a big team and, and they're, they're doing what, 55 million, something like that. No, north of that. Yeah, yeah. Right. But, but there's, um, I mean, there's a huge range, right? Like I had yet another mail merge on, right? And they're doing about a, a 1.5 per year. Right. And then Manny is obviously opposite end of that. It just, it just, it just depends on what kind of company you want to build. So, I mean, I, I get, I get what you're saying. It makes sense to me. Um, I mean, it sounds like you are strategically choosing to stay at the level you're at right now because of other life situations, which I respect. You don't hear that often. At, it, at the moment, but, it, but I, I don't want to make it like, look, it, do you have kids? 
No. Okay. Cool. I intend, by the way, like intentionally, no kids, not married, no house, no car, right. no payments. Right cool. <laughs> I have, I have all of that. And, and, and I am, you know, um, it, my, my son, Jack came out to me yesterday. He's like, dad, you're the best coach ever. Right. Just out of the blue. Cause I, I coach everything. I, I make time to go coach. Right. What do you, what and, do you like? You're talking sports or just life? Soccer, basketball, yeah. baseball, golf. I'm a I'm a golf junkie, so I'd like to be carrying his bag on the tour one day. But I make those choices. Now there are times where where I'll see requests come in, you know, from a client, and I'll get back to them right away, right? And I'm grinding away from you know after I get the kids down at nine o'clock until one two o'clock in the morning. Like we're not dropping the ball on anything. Um, we just like we're we're good where we are right now. You got two dudes, you know, that are, you know, growing, supporting a growing business doing around 50 K a month. And like, we can make that work for now. We don't need to, we don't need to go past that in 2018. Now 2019 is a different story, right? But we're running tests right now to prove out when and where we make those, yep. those investments. Very good, Ryan. Let's wrap up here with the famous five. Number one, what's your favorite business book? I don't have one. I, I have a book on my uh, on my uh, desk right now. The subtle art of not giving and yeah. <laughs> that I'm working. Through. I don't have enough time to read. I mean, the uh, oh, the places you'll go. It's my favorite business book. Number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying? No. Number four or number three, what's your favorite online tool for building a business besides your own? Intercom. And number uh, four, how many hours of sleep are you getting every night? Six. Six. Okay, that's pretty. With three kids and coaching all that and the business, that's pretty good. All right. And Ryan, I'm assuming married. Yes. All right. Last question. You're 37 today. Take us back to your 20 year old self. What do you wish you knew? I wish I had a computer earlier. Um, cell phones, cell phones just, you know, just started coming to fruition. Um, but thank God cell phones were not, uh, uh, prolific back then. Right. And, and held by everyone. Um, I think my 20 year old self, I wish I'd gotten started, uh, on the internet sooner and figured out a way to scratch out a dollar. And I think, you know, for folks listening to this, you might be in a job thinking about quitting, you know, doing something, um, find that side hustle, find that thing you love, right. Find that thing you're good at and then find people who suck at it. Right. And I think if you can marry those two things up and you can either build a service, uh, a, a human based service that you're helping people do something that they otherwise suck at, or you can find, you know, some sort of, of software or, or automation to do something. Um, there's market out there and there are tools like Replyify that you can use to go out and test out those markets, you know, before you make that jump. And, and I wish I'd, I'd, you know, had that, uh, that mindset back in the day. Guys, start earlier from Ryan, launched Replyify in 2017, today doing 50 grand in a month. That's from about 2,000 customers paying 25 bucks a month. Totally bootstrapped, turning about 7% of revenue annually, but expanding about 10%, so 103% net revenue retention. Too early on CAC and LTV and things like that, but they're starting to test some of those channels right now as they look to scale. Ryan, thank you for taking us to the top. Thanks, Nathan. Pleasure.